which are almost completely automated. And then there are some parts that are almost completely manual. Um, and uh, if you were to walk through the whole production system, you would see a very wide range from, yeah, like I said, f fully automatic to almost completely manual. Uh, but the vast majority, it's, it's, most of it is, is, is already uh, automated. Um, so, and then with the, some of the design architecture changes, like going to large uh, aluminum, uh, high pressure die cast uh, components, we, we can take the entire rear third of the car and cast it as a single piece. And now we're gonna do the, the front third of the car as a single piece. So the, the body line, um, drops by like 60 to 70 percent in size um, but yeah the, the the robot is not is not prompted by specifically by manufacturing needs it's it's just that um, we're just obviously making the pieces that are needed for a useful humanoid robot um, so I guess we probably should make it and if we don't someone else would will and so I guess we should make it and make sure it's safe. I should say, like, also manufacturing, volume manufacturing is extremely difficult, um, and we've gotten pretty good at that. It's also important for that humanoid robot. Like, how do you make the humanoid robot not be super expensive? And, you know. Hi. Uh, thank you for the pre <clears throat> presentation. And my question will be about scaling of Dojo. And uh, in particular, how do you scale uh, the compute nodes in terms of uh, thermal uh, thermals and power delivery? Because there is only so much heat that you can dispense and only so much power that you can uh, bring to uh, like cluster rack. And how do you plan to scale it? And how do you plan to scale it in multiple data centers? Yeah, hi, um, I'm Bill. i one of Dojo engineers. The, um, so from a thermal standpoint and uh, power standpoint, um, we've designed it very modular. So what you saw in the c compute tile, that will, that will cool the entire tile. So what we, what we, once we hook it up to, it is liquid cooled on both the top and the bottom side. Um, it doesn't need anything else. Um, and so when, when we talk about clicking these together, um, once we click it to power and we, once we click it to um, uh, cooling, it will be fully powered and fully cooled. <coughs> and all of that is uh, less than a cubic foot. Yeah, in the, it, so Tesla has a lot of expertise in power electronics and in, uh, in cooling. So we took uh, the power electronics ex expertise from the vehicle powertrain and the sort of uh, the advanced cooling that we developed uh, for the power electronics and for the vehicle and applied that to the supercomputer. Uh, because as you point out, uh, uh, getting heat out is uh, extremely important. It's just really heat limited. So, um, yeah, so it's funny that the, at, at the compute level, it's operating at less than a volt, <laughs> which is, uh, a, a very low voltage, with a lot of amps, so therefore a lot of heat. I squared R is a but really bites you on the amps. Um, hi, uh, my question is also similarly a question of scaling. Um, so it seems like a natural consequence of using, you know, significantly faster training hardware, models over a lot more data, or you'd be training a lot more complex models, which would be potentially significantly more expensive to run at inference time on the cars. Uh, I guess I was wondering, like, if there was a plan to, like, also um, apply Dojo as something that you'd be uh, using, like, on the self-driving cars, and if so, like, you know, do you foresee additional challenges there? I can, so, as you could see, like Andre's models are not just for cars. Like there are auto labeling models. There are other models that are like beyond car application, but they feed into the car stack. So, so Dojo will be used for all of those too. Not just the car inference part of the training. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the Dojo's first application will be consuming video data for training for that would then be run in the inverse inference engine on, on the car 
but uh, and that I think is an important uh, test to see if it actually is good or but is it actually better than GPU cluster or not um, so uh, but then beyond that it's basically a general a generalized uh, neural net uh, training computer uh, but it's very much uh, optimized to be a neural net so um, you know CPUs and GPUs uh, they're, they're they're not made to be um, they're not, they not designed specifically for training neural nets. Um, we've been able to make GPUs especially very efficient for for training neural nets, but that's not that was never their design intent. So it's it's basically GPUs are still essentially running at uh, neural neural net training in emulation mode. So um, with with Dojo, we're saying like, okay, let's just let's just ASIC the whole thing. Let's just ASIC, have this thing that's it's built for one. And just generally, any system that is designed for a specific uh, purpose will be better than one that is designed for a general purpose. Yeah, I have a question here. Hi. Um, so you described two separate systems, one was for vision, that was for planner and control. Um, does Dojo allow you to train networks that cross that boundary? And second thing is, if you were able to train such networks, would you have the onboard compute capability in the FSD system to be able to run that in, in the under your type latency constraints? Thanks. Uh, yeah, I think we should be able to train uh, panel networks on Dojo uh, or any GPUs. Uh, it's really uh, invariant into the platform. Um, and I think, uh, if, if anything, once we make this entire thing end to end, it will be more efficient than decoding all of these intermediate states. So you should be able to run faster if you make the entire thing uh, end to end in your, your neural networks. We can avoid and only decode only essential things required for driving the car. Yeah, certainly, and to end this, and is the guiding principle behind a lot of the network developments. And over time, in the stack, neural networks have taken on more and more functionality. And so uh, we want everything to be trained end to end because we see that that works best. Uh, but we are building it incrementally. So right now, the interface, there is vector space, and we are consuming it in the planner. But nothing really fundamentally prevents you from actually taking features and eventually fine tuning end to end. Uh, so I think that's definitely where this is headed. And the discovery really is like, what are, what are the right architectures that we need to place in the network blocks to make it amenable to that task? So like on a 